Let's begin with our top story. Former President Jacob Zuma does not meet the requirements for a rescission. That's how a majority of judges in the Constitutional Court have found when dismissing his application to have it overturned. Advocate Dalim Bofu had argued that his client is the only prisoner in the country who is jailed without trial. ENCA's Govan Whittles was following proceedings and joins me now live from outside the Constitutional Court. Uh, Govan, so he's not a suitable candidate, uh, so says the majority in the Constitutional Court. What else did Justice Sisi Kampempe say? Yeah, Masejo, basically the application by former President Jacob Zuma failed to meet the statutory requirements for a rescission application. And essentially that means that uh, the former president's arguments didn't meet the requirements of the section um, of the uh, legislation that they used to try and bring this application. So it specifically says that you're entitled to receive uh, or, or to be granted the rescission application once it's been determined that uh, the applicant has been excluded from the process and was not allowed to take part in it. And here, Justice Kampepe found that Mr. Zuma wasn't excluded, but opted to preclude himself from these proceedings. And there are two phrases which um, were harsh in criticism, but uh, kind of summed up uh, how the majority of justices of the Constitutional Court viewed this application by the former president and its litigious uh, vacillation and also more damagingly um, saying that the former president essentially uh, didn't have the grounds to come here in the first place. And one of the um, uh, key elements that we were looking out for is what the majority of justices would say uh, about the international law and the requirement that someone could not be detained without a fair trial. And again here, saying that the limitations on the rights to a fair trial placed on the former president were justified because of his continued insistence not to take part in the proceedings and saying that Mr. Zuma cannot be allowed to subsequently disclose the arguments that he would have made in the initial application which was brought by the State Capture Commission and then again um, when he refused to present mitigating arguments after being written to by Chief Justice Mokhoeng Mokhoeng and instead issued back a letter um, saying that he, the fact that he's now brought those arguments formally in this rescission application doesn't then render the judgment to jail him for 15 months erroneous and essentially that was the, the the grounds that he failed on he should have taken part in the initial proceedings and shouldn't have tried to only bring his arguments when this rescission application was made so he the application has been dismissed with costs mr zuma has been ordered to pay the costs of the secretary of commission the acting chief justice raymond zondo as well as two other parties there were a number of interesting part interested parties in this case many of them um defending the initial judgment which imprisoned the former president for 15 months but one of them uh, from democracy in action an organization which has supported the former president and with me i have its chairperson now tabi Tony, just to get a short reaction to this so it seemed like the former president was severely dealt with in that judgment and criticized again uh, for only bringing the arguments after he had elected not to bring them when he had the opportunity. And it does look like this matter has now come to an end. What's your view here? Uh, well, uh, in our view that the matter has not come to an end, uh, we are going to take the matter outside the, the, the country to the, Africa, to the African Human and People's Rights Commission because we really do feel as an organization that uh, our human rights it's, are not, were not protected in this particular matter, especially those of the former president. How were they not protected because all of his arguments were significantly or uh, substantively responded to, including the assertion that uh, his right to a fair trial was um, infringed upon? Well, um, I don't think, uh, according to us as an organization, that a right to a fair trial will mean that uh, before someone hands you a judge, uh, judgment and says to you, come in and present your judgment, what it essentially feels is that you have to make an application to the court, a proper application, and then you have to go through the processes and make sure that person is heard correctly uh, through a lawyer. So we don't feel that uh, President Zuma was given enough chance uh, personally to 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 uh, to ventilate his his case in court. But he was given ample opportunity and elected not to come to this court. 
Well, hence I'm saying to you that the, the way he was given the opportunity is not the way that is entrenched in our constitution. All right, we'll have to see how that argument holds up outside of the country. But in terms of South African jurisprudence and the judicial system, it does look like it's the end of the road in terms of the options that are available uh, to Mr. Zuma. Right now, he's been granted medical parole. Masejo, there is also another application to have that medical parole reviewed and set aside. But as far as we know, the former president still hospitalized, although his foundation says that he would be uh, discharged at a certain point, although they won't be indicating when that will be. It's back to you, Masejo. Just very quickly, Govin, before I let you go, um, the minority court uh, also uh, said something. They were not in agreement for punitive action against the former president. What did they say with the rescission application? All right, uh, let's leave it there for now. I think uh, there's some uh, technical issues in terms of Govan Whittles hearing me. Uh, Govan, I'm hoping you can hear me right now. Uh, I was asking uh, the last time this case was in the Constitutional Court, the day they made the decision for the 15-month jail term, uh, there was a minority court decision that said that uh, it was not for the punitive action against the former president. What did they say in the application for the rescission? I'm not, I'm not able to hear you too clearly there, uh, Masejo, but in terms of the minority judgment written by Justice Jafta, it stated uh, the key point from that minority judgment is that he believed that the limitations that were placed on the former president's right to a free trial were not justifiable, and therefore um, the decision to imprison him would be uh, invalid. That is an, a minority judgment, um, and it was reached by only two justices of the Constitutional Court, while the majority found that uh, the limitations were justifiable, um, and therefore the judgment was sound. All right, ENCA's Govan Whittles, let's leave it there for now. Very big story, and it is still to be continued. As you heard from Govan, there's still that application to review the medical parole granted to the former president by uh, Correctional Services. Now, the case